Welcome, welcome to the best five minute wine podcast. I'm your host, Forrest Kelly. From the sea to the glass, wine has a past. Our aim at the best five minute wine podcast is to look for adventure at wineries around the globe. After all, grape minds think alike. Let's start the adventure. Our featured winery is. We continue our conversation with Patrick, owner of Table Mountain Vineyard in Wyoming. I think, Patrick, you offer a flair that not many wineries in the entire world can offer in that you've got other crops that you're working on simultaneously while producing wine. Well, we still uh, we still do the traditional farming as well to try and keep the farm going. The winery has turned into the 10 acres could really be a full-time job and we do it as good as we can but um yeah we do need a you know when they tell you to diversify in any industry they don't tell you you need 10 or 20 more people to handle that right. that extra those extra hats that you wear so um on top of that the event hosting we have at the winery you know we're grateful that we've kind of become a community hub we host wedding showers and baby showers and weddings and the paint classes on the weekend so we really do have four or five different very active parts of the winery all in play, but they do come out to make it be a successful venture that does sustain itself and allows us to stay on the farm and keep enjoying what we enjoy. How much has the vineyard grown since you first started? In terms of the vineyard, when we started in 04, we probably had about five acres total of grapes. We kind of kept planting every year. We never did everything in one big block. We started our very first year with 300 vines in 01 and then progressively planted one to two acres every year. So right now in 2021, we're about at 10 acres, which we we do about a thousand vines per acre. Our capacity in terms of the winery ebbs and flows based on the weather. We'll have a bumper crop and then the next year we'll have a very, very small harvest. So our, our capacity, we're pretty variable three to 60,000 gallons in terms of wine, which we measure in gallons, which tells you how small we are. <laughs> but, but again, we're just a, a pretty small mom and pop and fun shop. And uh, we do harvest anywhere in terms of grapes. Um, we do have some other growers who grow for us. Um, we go anywhere from 15 to 30 tons of grapes a year. Obviously, last year, 2020, was a change for all of us, but how have you adapted to the new retail climate? Yeah, I'd say, um, and and most people really hit the ground running with online sales, and where we self-distribute, we really slowed our retailing or our wholesale down just because we needed to. Our retail sales just here at the tasting room probably made up 60% this year versus about 40% wholesale. In other years, we've been flip-flop that way, 60-40 the other way. So we do have an internet presence. We don't ship as much as we probably, or market that avenue as much as we do. We kind of just stick more to our rural base and through through the tasting room and then through the retail stores that we do have. How many different kinds of varieties of grapes are you growing? We have about 14 different varieties that we're growing of grapes. And a few of them, weather related, soil related, don't always show up at the same time. So we have a few that we'll get a harvest off of maybe every two to three years. We have some other growers who kind of ebb and flow the same way. So at any given time, we can have about 10 to 11 11 different wines. Right now we're at a pretty constant seven with the varieties that we have that continually produce. Your labels look like you have a lot of fun. Did you do the labels on all your wine? We do. It's kind of a collective family and friends effort, but we will, you know, as we're bottling or in the vineyard, we we try and come up with some names and and different labels. And a lot of the labels are inspired or um, just artwork of pictures we take around the farm. And then, um, again, some retro kind of Western themes just to kind of tie in our our Wyoming ties too. Will somebody answer that phone? It's time, boys and girls, for our listener voicemail. Hi, this is Christy, and I'm from Canada. I was wondering what type of wine or wines would be best served as like a sangria sangria. for my like future parties like you know when COVID's over. (laughs) Okay, Christy, sangria is Spanish. It's a Spanish drink of red wine mixed with lemonade, fruit, and spices. So if you want to keep it authentic, you want to use a Spanish wine. And that would be garnacha. Or with a Spanish accent, <clears throat> garnacha. So for your party, to keep it authentic, stick with garnacha. 
But if you're just by yourself, you could go crazy and add some Pinot Noir. And then, of course, add your carbonated water and brandy. Great question. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I'm Forrest Kelly. This episode of the Best 5-Minute Wine Podcast was produced by iHism. If you like the show, please tell your friends and pets and subscribe. Until next time, pour the wine and ponder your next adventure. This is Doug Vincent with the podcast Walk and Roll Live, Disability Stories. In 1956, I contracted polio. Thanks to my loving parents, I've lived a full, rich life over the past 67 years. Join me as I share my journey and uncover inspiring stories of resilience. This podcast is a platform for survivors of disability and those who champion services for the disabled community. Tune in on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, whatever your favorite podcast platform is. Let's walk and roll together on this incredible journey of strength and empowerment.